Physics is the fundamental branch of science that developed out of the study of nature and philosophy known, until around the end of the 19th century, as natural philosophy. Today, physics is ultimately defined as the study of matter, energy and the relationships between them. Physics is, in some senses, the oldest and most basic pure science. Its discoveries find applications throughout the natural sciences. Since matter and energy are the basic constituents of the natural world, the other sciences are generally more limited in their scope and may be considered branches that have split off from physics to become sciences in their own right. Physics today may be divided loosely into classical physics and modern physics. Ancient history Elements of what became physics were drawn primarily from the fields of astronomy, optics, and mechanics which were methodologically united through the study of geometry. These mathematical disciplines began in antiquity with the Babylonians and with Hellenistic writers such as Archimedes and Ptolemy. Ancient philosophy, meanwhile, including what was called physics, focused on explaining nature through ideas such as Aristotle's four types of cause. Ancient Greece The move towards a rational understanding of nature began at least since the Archaic period in Greece with the pre-Socratic philosophers. The philosopher Thales of Miletus, dubbed the father of science, for refusing to accept various supernatural, religious or mythological explanations for natural phenomena, proclaimed that every event had a natural cause. Thales also made advancements in 580 BCE by suggesting that water is the basic element. Experimenting with the attraction between magnets and rubbed amber and formulating the first recorded cosmologies, Anaximander, famous for his proto-evolutionary theory, disputed the Thales ideas and proposed that rather than water, a substance called apion was the building block of all matter. Around 500 BCE, Heraclitus proposed that the only basic law governing the universe was the principle of change and that nothing remains in the same state, indefinitely. This observation made him one of the first scholars in ancient physics to address the role of time in the universe, a key and sometimes contentious concept in modern and present-day physics. The early physicist Leucippus adamantly opposed the idea of direct divine intervention in the universe proposing instead that natural phenomena had a natural cause. Leucippus and his student Democritus were the first to develop the theory of atomism, the idea that everything is composed entirely of various imperishable, indivisible elements called atoms. Aristotle, a student of Plato, promoted the concept that observation of physical phenomena could ultimately lead to the discovery of the natural laws governing them. Aristotle's writings cover physics, metaphysics, poetry, theatre, music, logic, rhetoric, linguistics, politics, government, ethics, biology and zoology. He wrote the first work which refers to that line of study as physics. In the 4th century BCE, Aristotle founded the system known as Aristotelian physics. He attempted to explain ideas such as motion with the theory of four elements. Aristotle believed that all matter was made up of ether, or some combination of four elements earth, water, air, and fire. According to Aristotle, these four terrestrial elements are capable of intertransformation and move toward their natural place. So a stone falls downward toward the center of the cosmos, but flames rise upward toward the circumference. Eventually, Aristotelian physics became enormously popular for many centuries in Europe, informing the scientific and scholastic developments of the Middle Ages. It remained the mainstream scientific paradigm in Europe until the time of Galileo Galilei and Isaac Newton. Early in classical Greece, knowledge that the Earth is spherical was common. Around 240 BCE, as the result of seminal experiment, Eratosthenes accurately estimated its circumference. In contrast to Aristotle's geocentric views, Aristarchus of Samos presented an explicit argument for a heliocentric model of the solar system, i.e., for placing the Sun, not the Earth, at its center. 
Seleucus of Seleucia, a follower of Aristarchus' heliocentric theory, stated that the Earth rotated around its own axis, which, in turn, revolved around the Sun. Though the arguments he used were lost, Plutarch stated that Seleucus was the first to prove the heliocentric system through reasoning. In the 3rd century BCE, the Greek mathematician Archimedes of Syracuse, generally considered to be the greatest mathematician of antiquity and one of the greatest of all time, laid the foundations of hydrostatics, statics and calculated the underlying mathematics of the lever. A leading scientist of classical antiquity, Archimedes also developed elaborate systems of pulleys to move large objects with a minimum of effort. The Archimedes screw underpins modern hydro-engineering, and his machines of war helped to hold back the armies of Rome in the First Punic War. Archimedes even tore apart the arguments of Aristotle and his metaphysics, pointing out that it was impossible to separate mathematics and nature and proved it by converting mathematical theories into practical inventions. Furthermore, in his work on floating bodies, around 250 BCE, Archimedes developed the law of buoyancy, also known as Archimedes' principle. In mathematics, Archimedes used the method of exhaustion to calculate the area under the arc of a parabola with the summation of an infinite series and gave a remarkably accurate approximation of pi. He also defined the spiral bearing his name, formulae for the volumes of surfaces of revolution and an ingenious system for expressing very large numbers. He also developed the principles of equilibrium states and centers of gravity, ideas that would influence the well-known scholars Galileo and Newton. Hippocus, focusing on astronomy and mathematics, used sophisticated geometrical techniques to map the motion of the stars and planets, even predicting the times that solar eclipses would happen. In addition, he added calculations of the distance of the Sun and Moon from the Earth, based upon his improvements to the observational instruments used at that time. Another of the most famous of the early physicists was Ptolemy, one of the leading minds during the time of the Roman Empire. Ptolemy was the author of several scientific treatises, at least three of which were of continuing importance to later Islamic and European science. The first is the astronomical treatise now known as the Almagest. The second is the geography, which is a thorough discussion of the geographic knowledge of the Greco-Roman world. Much of the accumulated knowledge of the ancient world was lost. Even of the works of the better-known thinkers, few fragments survived. Although he wrote at least 14 books, almost nothing of Hippocus' direct work survived. Of the 150 reputed Aristotelian works, only 30 exist, and some of those are little more than lecture notes. India and China are important physical and mathematical traditions also existed in ancient Chinese and Indian sciences. In Indian philosophy, Maharishi Kannada was the first to systematically develop a theory of atomism around 200 BCE though some authors have allotted him an earlier era in the 6th century BCE. It was further elaborated by the Buddhist atomists Dharmakirti and Dignaga during the first millennium CE. Pakadakakayana, a 6th century BCE Indian philosopher and contemporary of Gautama Buddha, had also propounded ideas about the atomic constitution of the material world. These philosophers believed that other elements were physically palpable and hence comprised minuscule particles of matter. The last minuscule particle of matter that could not be subdivided further was termed Parmanu. These philosophers considered the atom to be indestructible and hence eternal. The Buddhists thought atoms to be minute objects unable to be seen to the naked eye that come into being and vanish in an instant. The Vaisheshika school of philosophers believed that an atom was a mere point in space. Indian theories about the atom are greatly abstract and enmeshed in philosophy as they were based on logic and not on personal experience or experimentation. In Indian astronomy, Aryabhata's Aryabhati proposed the Earth's rotation. 
while Nilakantha Somayaji of the Kerala School of Astronomy and Mathematics proposed a semi-heliocentric model resembling the Taconic system. The study of magnetism in ancient China dates back to the 4th century BCE. A main contributor to this field was Shen Kuo, a polymath and statesman who was the first to describe the magnetic needle compass used for navigation, as well as establishing the concept of true north. In optics, Shen Kuo independently developed a camera obscura. Muslim scientists in the 5th to 15th centuries, scientific progress occurred in the Muslim world. Many classic works in Latin and Greek were translated into Arabic. Ibn Sina, known as Avicenna, was a polymath from Bukhara responsible for important contributions to physics, optics, philosophy and medicine. He is most famous for writing the Canon of Medicine, a text that was used to teach student doctors in Europe until the 1600s. Important contributions were made by Ibn el Haytham, a mathematician from Basra considered one of the founders of modern optics. Ptolemy and Aristotle theorized that light either shone from the eye to illuminate objects or that light emanated from objects themselves whereas Al-Haytham suggested that light travels to the eye and rays from different points on an object. The works of Ibn Al-Haytham and Abu Rayhan Biruni eventually passed on to Western Europe where they were studied by scholars such as Roger Bacon and Witello. Omar Khayyam, a Persian scientist, calculated the length of a solar year and was only out by a fraction of a second when compared to our modern-day calculations. He used this to compose a calendar considered more accurate than the Gregorian calendar that came along 500 years later. He is classified as one of the world's first great science communicators, said, for example to have convinced a Sufi theologian that the world turns on an axis. Nazir al-Din al-Tuzi, an astronomer and mathematician from Baghdad, authored The Treasury of Astronomy, a remarkably accurate table of planetary movements that reformed the existing planetary model of Roman astronomer Ptolemy by describing a uniform, circular motion of all planets in their orbits. This work led to the later discovery, by one of his students, that planets actually have an elliptical orbit. Copernicus later drew heavily on the work of Aldin Althusi and his students, but without acknowledgement. The gradual chipping away of the Ptolemaic system paved the way for the revolutionary idea that the Earth actually orbited the Sun. Medieval Europe awareness of ancient works re-entered the West through translations from Arabic to Latin. Their reintroduction, combined with Judeo-Islamic theological commentaries, had a great influence on medieval philosophers such as Thomas Aquinas. Scholastic European scholars, who sought to reconcile the philosophy of the ancient classical philosophers with Christian theology, proclaimed Aristotle the greatest thinker of the ancient world. In cases where they didn't directly contradict the Bible, Aristotelian physics became the foundation for the physical explanations of the European churches. Quantification became a core element of medieval physics. Based on Aristotelian physics, scholastic physics described things as moving according to their essential nature. Celestial objects were described as moving in circles. Because perfect circular motion was considered an innate property of objects that existed in the uncorrupted realm of the celestial spheres, the theory of impetus, the ancestor to the concepts of inertia and momentum, was developed along similar lines by medieval philosophers such as John Philoponus and Jean Buridan. Motions below the lunar sphere were seen as imperfect, and thus could not be expected to exhibit consistent motion. More idealized motion in the sublunary realm could only be achieved through artifice and prior to the 17th century. Many did not view artificial experiments as a valid means of learning about the natural world. Physical explanations in the sublunary realm revolved around tendencies. Stones contained the element earth, and earthly objects tended to move in a straight line toward the center of the earth unless otherwise prevented from doing so. 